Okay, we hope you've enjoyed the last two days of our Work From Anywhere Virtual Solutions Expo. This has been our second foray into the digital trade show environment, and we hope you've been able to spend some time with our vendor partners, as well as our internal teams to discover more about how Staples Business Advantage can help you work more efficiently in today's ever-changing environment. We have several more events scheduled throughout 2021, so we hope to see you back at a future event. My name is Dave Hickey, and I'm one of the regional sales directors here at uh, SBA Canada. And to bring us home here on day two, we'll be having a conversation with two of our top strategic account leaders, and we'll be discussing work from home and employee purchase plans with a goal of providing you some insight into how these programs can benefit both you personally, as well as your organization. So first I'll introduce you to the team. We'll highlight some interesting facts and figures about working from home. We'll talk about the future of working from home and share some of our insights with you on what programs we have that can benefit anybody in a remote working environment. So let's uh, meet my colleagues who will be joining me today for our conversation. Over to you, Priscilla. Thanks, Dave. Hi, everyone. My name is Priscilla Eng, and I am your strategic account leader for our financial institutions. I've been with Staples for over 20 years, and as a specialist in the financial sector, I work with my clients to find the best and most effective solutions to bring to their business. And supporting their associates from a work from home programs has been something we've been doing for a whole year now. So thanks very much for having me today, Dave. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> thanks, Priscilla. I'm Mella. Thanks, Dave. Um, my name is Amela McLeod, and I'm a strategic account leader here for, for Canada. And I've been with Staples for almost eight years now, managing uh, enterprise size organizations. And just like Priscilla mentioned in the past year, we've had many conversations around the new working environments and how best to support our clients as where uh, our environments have changed. So we look forward to talking to you today about our work from, work from home program and the employee purchasing offers as well. Thanks, Amela. And uh, you've met me. I'm Dave. As I said, I'm a regional sales director. I've been with the company for just short of 19 years in a variety of different roles. Uh, I support right now five selling teams in our Ontario marketplace. And as both Priscilla and Amela have mentioned, over the past year, we've had a lot of conversations uh, with our customers around um, you know, ensuring that your associates and themselves in a new work from home environment and reality are supported. So uh, we're excited to be able to have this conversation with you today. OK, so let's jump into it and, and chat a little bit first about how work from home is going. Uh, currently, when you Google working from home, over four billion results are returned in less than one second. So that's that's an awful lot of information out there to sift through. Uh, notably, in 2018, data showed that less than 10% of employees had the ability or the option to work from home for one or two days a week. That's a relatively low number. And fast forward to April of 2020, which everyone's familiar, we were locked down uh, due to the pandemic. Data showed that 40% of Canadian workers were shifted to a work from home environment. So as you can see through the numbers, that's a significant shift. And for many organizations, as well as people, it was a, a quick adjustment. Uh, as sales professionals, we were fortunately familiar with working from home already, but there are many roles within organizations that have traditionally been set up 100% to work in the office. As we know, the pandemic forced companies to react quickly. Uh, a, a very relevant example for us here at Staples Business Advantage was uh, that we were able to successfully transition our customer care team and our customer contact center associates uh, to a work from home environment within a week. So that's a department that was traditionally set up uh, in a call center type environment. And within a week, we had everybody working from home, servicing the needs of the customer, taking calls um, and engaging with our customers directly. Only the only the only difference being they were now doing that in a home, a, a home environment. That was probably something that as an organization we had never considered before, uh, but we were able to execute that out of necessity. And over a year later, our customer care teams still to this day remain supporting our, uh, our SBA customers in a work from home environment. A Stanford University study in May showed that only 36% of those surveys described their work from home environment as perfect and can work from home 100% of the time. And surprisingly, only 49% of respondents indicated that they can work in a room that is not their bedroom. So, Amela, 
thinking of the information here, I guess specifically around the points on uh, being able to work from home as well as being able to do it effectively, what are your thoughts? Are people still adjusting to working from home? If so, what are their challenges and how do you find that they're overcoming them? It's a great question and absolutely looking at the data here, Dave, it very much aligns to the conversations that I'm having. Just to give you an idea, one of my, one of my large accounts shared with me that the conversation around working from home actually wasn't part of their plan for the next 10 years. And of course that has changed and they're seeing that their employees are able to be effective working from home. Um, however, there have been some challenges. Obviously now that we're a full year into this environment, people are finding just like the data shows there that they don't have a dedicated space to work from home. So many are still working from dining room tables or a makeshift office space in their bedrooms which is okay in the short term, but as we continue to work from home and uh, it is something that a lot of organizations are considering of extending even after we're able to go back to the office, we're finding that a lot of employees are now putting in the request for more ergonomic solutions and are putting, putting in those asks of their HR departments to support them to be able to continue to work from home effectively. Um, people are saying that they're able to work from home as effectively as they did before. If anything, they're finding that they were working more with the time that they used to spend commuting to the office, they're now spending working at their desks. Again, the biggest challenge really is finding the products and the solutions to continue to work from home and to stay healthy and, and efficient. And you know, the setup makes a big impact on that. Well, some great, some great points there. Thanks, Amela. And, and so, Priscilla, I guess over to you. And if you think back to where we were in March and April of, of 2020, which really seems like it was so, so long ago now. Uh, how was your adjustment to moving to a 100% work from home environment? What, what were your challenges and how did you stay focused and productive? And to make the question, I guess, even more complex, are you still <laughs> seeing those same types of challenges today with customers? Well, I've had the opportunity to work from home prior to all the pandemic. Um, but the biggest adjustment that I would say is to really find the balance between workspace setup and having the right equipment for everyone. So I have two older teens um, who are pretty self-sufficient in terms of online learning, but we had to make sure everyone had their own space just to stay focused. And similar to Amela's comments, my, share, my clients shared the uh, same challenges as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thanks, Priscilla. Thanks. So if we move forward uh, from kind of where, where, we, where we are and I guess how we got here uh, and we start to take a look at what do we think the future of working from home looks like, um, we want to dive in a little bit to what we're hearing and seeing with our customers as well. So studies show that by 2025, an estimated 70% of the workforce will be working remotely at least five days per month. 74% of CEOs plan to shift workers um, to remote after the pandemic. And, my, and many companies, primarily big tech, have been at the forefront of advising their people that they would work from home indefinitely. Much of this is likely due to the revelation that work from home positively impacts overall productivity. And that's despite some recent information shared on virtual fatigue and the struggle of some folks to find an adequate place to work. There's some info on this slide here that speaks to the data around those working from home, working longer, working more often, working on weekends, and in general, the overall ability for those people to be more productive in a home-based work environment. So with that in mind, the need to ensure that you're investing not only in yourself while you're working from home is increasing. The reality is setting in for some organizations and just now they're implementing solutions for their associates working in a home environment with the understanding that it's a model that's likely not going away anytime soon. And they're also seeing the benefit to overall productivity and production from their working from home associates. So Priscilla, understanding that work from home is here to stay, and that mm -hmm. the pandemic has likely forever changed the landscape of working. What types of solutions are you seeing customers implement to take care of their associates who are working in a home environment? That's a great question too. So a few solutions that I'm seeing is that our customers are building out programs where their associates can access their corporate programs, um, have their products and tools shipped directly to their homes. Um, and there's a lot going on these days, right? So an easy self-serve type of a program was really important, along with making sure that the right products are available for everyone in the company and to everybody. Um, some of them have even offered to supplement their expenses for their associates for work from home programs. 
Thanks, Priscilla. Amela, where do you see companies focusing their attention on for programs that they're implementing for their home-based associates? And what sorts of product solutions are they looking at? All the conversations I've been having with uh, my customers when making programs available to their staff, really the main focus has been technology and furniture. The reason why is that those are the two areas that make the biggest impact on a work environment for their staff. So we're finding that, um, you know, in collaboration with my specialists, we're, we're working with the customers to identify some of the most common products such as, you know, monitors, monitor arms, ergonomic keyboards and mouse. And then of course, on the furniture side, a chair is a key component of a, of a comfortable working environment and sit stand desks. You know, that's something that's been talked to, talked about for years now, you know, sitting is the new smoking. We're sitting more than ever. Uh, so having a desk, whether it's a single unit or a unit that sits on top of a desk has been a, a very, very popular item. The other, the other piece that I'm finding very common is looking for smaller furniture, so smaller desks. As we mentioned earlier, there's not a lot of people out there that have a dedicated space, so we need to be creative. Um, so those are definitely the focuses the companies are putting when building out programs for their staff. That's great, thanks Amela. So we've talked a bit uh, today about organizations and supported work from home programs. And the reality is, is that companies are not covering all of the purchases that associates are making in their home environments. As you've heard both Amela and Priscilla highlight, a lot of the focus has been placed on seating, headsets, technology, sit stand, sit stand desks, and other like products. And I think most of us can relate to using other online providers to order other supplies that we need in a home environment to keep us going at home. Whether it's been groceries, and we all remember uh, the toilet tissue shortage uh, from March or April of 2020, uh, whether it's technology items like Chromebooks and monitors to support kids who are or were, uh, and maybe they still are, learning in a new home-based environment, as well as other cleaning and safety products. And, and that, uh, that's where our employee purchase program or EPP comes in. And with the functional EPP program, you receive corporate pricing on items that you're, pur uh, you're purchasing personally. So with an EPP program, you continue to get access to well over 400,000 items online with seamless account setup options. We provide delivery and installation of furniture items if required. So if you're looking to make larger changes to your home office requirement, now that you're, you know, you're finding that you're working in that environment a lot more, um, like I said, we can provide uh, delivery uh, installation and delivery services as well. Our EPP programs will build to your personal credit card and they're a fantastic way for you to leverage corporate pricing on thousands of in-stock items that allow you or those in your household, so a relative, a spouse, a child, to remain connected, stay productive, and uh, continue to produce in a home-based environment. With our work from home programs, for our business customers, we offer a variety of customization options. To highlight those, Amela, I'm hoping you can talk about one or two work from home programs that you've implemented with customers. Absolutely. Um, we've implemented a number throughout the year, but there's one in particular I'd like to speak to today. It's one of my uh, global retail customers. They decided to implement a global program for their employees where they were giving them a budget to use um, that is available to them until the end of May. Uh, with this budget, they wanted to make sure we captured the most appropriate products. So we worked together to collaborate and create a list of, again, as I mentioned earlier, technology and furniture um, products that are going to be available for them online. The great thing about the work from home program is we, we understood the, cus the customer's needs, which was to give their employees the best program available that's going to be price conscious. So of course, we're going to be competitive versus all different online platforms as well as uh, availability. So that was another aspect of the program that was very important. If their employees go online to make a purchase, we wanna make sure we're able to deliver that product in a quick turnaround. So when building out that program, we took a look at products that were gonna be the most suited for what their employee needs are, are gonna be available for quick delivery, and of course, price was gonna be competitive and they were gonna see the value of the program. In addition to that, you know, we wanted to ensure that when their employees do log on to our eWay platform to make the purchases, we were able to communicate and highlight the budget to them. They could then see the updated budget of what they've used and what is remaining, so there's no confusion on the employee's end. Um, the other aspect of the program that we leveraged was the ability to create shopping lists, really. 
because we wanted to make it as easy as possible by directing the staff to the list of products that we built for them um, that they can benefit from. And the feedback has been very positive. The employees felt like their their employer was really hearing them. They were taking taking care of them and giving them the best products available, all while making their shopping experience really easy online. So that that's one of the programs that I, I could speak to that has been really successful. Um, and many others have fo followed the similar format. So uh, on that example that you just walked us through, mm -hmm. uh, I, I just maybe thought I'd ask a couple of quick questions. Um, and we're going off script, I guess, with, with respect to how uh, like how does that budgeting feature work so if i'm if i'm logging in online to place an order and my organization said that i have permission to spend up to four hundred dollars on certain items what does that look like for me logging in and and, and kind of using that functionality that's a great question so as you when you log online and you go into your account um, as you select products and add them to your shopping list you will actually be able to see the budget allocated to you so let's say it's four hundred dollars and then if i add a, a let's say uh, a monitor that's $100 to my cart, I'll automatically see a deduction from my budget that is gonna show me that now I have $300 remaining. So it's it's a clear, it's visible, and uh, there's it, uh, it eliminates any confusion on the end user standpoint. That's great, and it sounds like through kind of curating the offering, we've got the ability as well to, to narrow down the types of chairs or the types of sit-stand desks that a customer would wanna make available to their associates. Absolutely, and that is that is definitely part of our goal is to make sure that their employees will be able to maximize that budget. So we've we've kept that in mind to when creating the list, you know, whether with the technology and furniture, we wanted to make sure that they had products available to them that were going to allow them to get a monitor and a chair, you know, and and try to build those bundles for them, which maximizes the budget and they can really set up a proper environment at home. So now that we've uh, worked successfully with a, a wide variety of customers of all kind of industries and sizes relative to implementing work from home programs, are you finding that customers are, are kind of leaning on you for advice now relative to what, what options are available and how they should implement a program? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, just as you can imagine as an individual shopper, if I go online and I look for a chair or I look for a, a keyboard, there's so many options that come up, right? And it's really our job as experts here at Staples Business Advantage to share the best practices and share the products that we've seen the most success with, uh, with our customers to reduce the amount of time that they have to spend building the products and the amount of the, you know, their employees have to spend looking for solutions that they might need. We're, we're here as experts to give them that package per se and say, this is what's working. This is how we've implemented with other clients. And uh, the, the feedback has been tremendous, both from the procurement or an HR standpoint, as well as the end users who are leveraging these programs. That's fantastic. Thanks, Amela. So Priscilla, over mm -hmm. to you and, and same same question, but as it relates to the employee purchase programs that we've chatted about. So what sorts of things made those programs successful and what are the biggest hurdles that we need to um, overcome to implement a successful program? Uh, yeah, so we had a great employee purchase program for a large financial institution that we put together at the onset of the pandemic. So as soon as we were told we needed to stay home and work from home, uh, we activated the EPP program. So again, kind of going back, the EPP program is based on um, uh, adding on to the corporate program, but allowing the individual to purchase um, whatever that they need for their home, for their families, and pay by their own personal credit card, right? So this is um, the direction that we took with the program. But similar to what Amela said uh, and shared, um, we came up with different types of shopping lists, um, with different types of products. So we had some really great, you know, good, better, best scenarios, um, different size in terms of chairs, lots of different options for um, technology. Um, but we felt that communication was key, specifically around this type of a program. Um, so we had the help of, you know, the procurement team, the HR teams. So notifications to all employees uh, were sent out for this program and to let everyone know that it was available. And we even set up um, a private onboarding site and a link so that you know the employees and associates can go on there and get their setup and access really quickly. And to add on, um, 
you know, some of the things that my clients have come back to us to ask us about in terms of our expertise on the products, on what to look for. From time to time, you know, we get really great hot buys and we get really great promotional items in terms of, you know, um, super deals. And we share those with people through the EPP program and they've just been really appreciative of the additional savings that they're getting. Oh, that's great. Uh, appreciate you sharing. So, um, as, as you continue to have these types of conversations with customers around getting an employee purchase program set up, is there, you know, do you think that, is it too late at this point, one year into the pandemic, to get someone set up on a program like this? I don't think it's too late. I mean, if employees or if there's a company that doesn't have this type of program it just adds to the value that the company is bringing to share and show their commitment to the employees and understanding that they're there to help and support the employees i mean it's just like adding an extra perk to whatever perk program that they would have or an employee benefit that they would have right it's extending the you know discounts of their corporate program so that they can have that for their work at home environment i don't think it's too late um you know to your point and to the point on the other side, work from home isn't going away, right? We are going to be working from home, learning from home at some type of capacity um, in the near future. So I think everyone should get on board. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thanks, Priscilla. Mm -hmm. So uh, just move the slide ahead here. And, and as we begin to wrap up, uh, I, I definitely want to make sure I take advantage of having two experts with me today. Uh, for our conversation. So I'm hoping, you know, Amela, you and Priscilla can each take a couple of minutes and talk a little bit about any other considerations you see in today's work, work from home uh, environment. So what are you seeing with your customers um, that, that maybe we didn't consider when we launched the programs that we launched uh, at the start of the pandemic? What, what sorts of things are you seeing today? It's a great question. I can, I can start with uh, <laughs> talking to the single sign on that you have as uh, a point there. That was something that we worked with one of my customers and data data protection and security, cybersecurity was extremely important to them. Uh, one of the requirements for a work from home program was the ability to give access to their employees through single sign on. So that means they didn't want to send login information to their staff as that could easily get into the wrong hands. They wanted to make sure that we worked with their IT team to establish a single sign on. So when they their employees log into their intranet, they automatically then could access eWay and the work from home program. And we were able to do that very, very quickly, which I myself as well as the customer was very impressed with. So that's a, that's an area that it's, it's key important to note that we do have that capability. The other thing that I'll speak to is, you know, what I'm, what I'm noticing is organizations are looking at building morale and reaching their employees and keep staying connected during this pandemic as it's been a full year that we haven't seen each other in person. I haven't mm -hmm. gone into the office and many ha are in the same boat. So what I'm noticing, you know, in addition to these work from home program, which is an amazing uh, offer that these companies are giving to their employees, they're also starting to leverage, you know, uh, new employee starting kits. So sending swag to their new hires so that they feel connected. They have, you know, they put on their company sweater or they drink from their coffee mug that has their company logo on it, it does help keep them connected and feel special. Um, so that is something that I'm noticing more conversations happening around is how do we stay connected and how do we build the morale with our employees since we can't see each other and we don't know exactly when we'll be able to see each other in, in large groups again. It will happen, but we don't know when. So these are some of the areas that we're now having conversations around and building some creative offerings to help our customers achieve that. Thanks, Thank I think you took like, everything I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I mean, just thinking on, you know, what we can build on that or what I can add to that. I would also um, include, too, that, you know, as the companies are supporting the work from home programs and, and their associates, you know, I, like you said, I, I'm working from home. If my son's laptop goes down or, you know, some type of technology happens, you know, there, there might not be a, a tech team that I can call for that, right? And there, there might not be that type of um, tech support available. So I think outside of these corporate programs, um, you know, just specifically for the work from home and EPP program, you know, SBA has 
a plethora of other solutions available that we can now layer on to these work from home and EPP programs. So let's say if tech services were, uh, were re really needed, right? We could add on perhaps our retail tech support team to kind of help combat that. And that's like a mini tech support for home. And no matter how great my teams are, I am sure you know they've got some questions on the, that tech too. And privacy is huge too, right? So we want to think about maybe a shredding program. I know that perhaps, you know, there are some, you know, confidential confidentiality um, regarding printing from home, but it's a given. Everyone has a printer at home or probably needs a printer at home. Um, but shredding is a huge part of the whole privacy uh, piece of it, component of it. A, a little bit different than the actual single sign-on privacy piece of it that you were speaking about, Amela. But I think there's a lot of discussions to have. And even with our current or my current clients with EPP and work from home programs, we're always looking at ways to provide innovation um, and just make that associate um, um, experience so much more valuable. No, some some great points there. And and I guess one other thing that comes to mind from uh, from my perspective is, you know, starting to hear customers talk around and it's certainly exciting um, because a year is a long time to be working from home and not going to not go anywhere uh, to visit customers in person and not go into the office and 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 continue to foster those relationships. So it's exciting for us now because we're engaging on a lot of conversations around what does a return to office look like um, or a return to normal or business as usual. Um, so. Uh, are either of you able to offer any insight into what sorts of solutions we have that that we're implementing with customers around a return to office program? What does that look like? Okay, so Amel, I'm going to go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, you know, return to office, um, you know, back business as usual. I think what's important um, is to make sure that we have those programs available um, in terms of, you know, whether it's facility products, personal um, PPE products to keep the employees safe, make sure that we're working with our customers to understand um, what type of requirements are needed. Like if floor spacing or, or floor markers are needed for physical distancing, um, you know, I, I work with a lot of um, customers and companies that are in the downtown core. So we're talking to them about, you know, space in an elevator, right? Like how do we how do we maximize the space in an, in, a, in an elevator but minimize the physical distancing? Um, a couple of other um, solutions that we've had is to look at perhaps um, talking to the clients about phased approaches, making sure that maybe even having employees come in with their own, um, you know, business essential kit, right? A, like a little, you know, office kit that they can actually put their own supplies in put it away, take it away, be responsible for it, and then again, take it away, take it home with them. So nothing is actually left in the office place. We're seeing a lot of, sorry, Amela. We're seeing a lot of disposable requirements coming through now as well. Um, so I know that you know we've done a lot in terms of making sure everyone is thinking about sustainability in the workplace, especially around the break rooms. And um, so we're actually thinking about you know disposable you know, cutlery, cups, plates, you name it. And, you know, there's just a lot of different things. And, you know, I think there's some other items and some other conversations in, in terms of the ship and packaging world that we have too available, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you spoke to a lot of the topics that I was going to mention, but there's a couple of differences, I guess, just based on the type of accounts that I have. Yeah. Um, what I'm What I'm noticing is in the in the retail or the consumer facing environments, uh, there's a big demand for a cleaning solution that doesn't harm technology. So mm -hmm. if you've got your, um, you know, your iPads that you're using in the store or the debit machines, you want to be careful in how you're cleaning that so you're not damaging uh, those products that you need to use on a daily basis. So that's where those conversations come in to find the right solution that's going to disinfect but also keep your product, your technology safe. The other uh, things that we're I'm discussing with some of my clients is around, you know, as we go back to our normal, maybe some of the seating areas that they might have had in their waiting area have been made of leather or fabric. Well, now is the time to start reconsidering that because we're going to need more vinyl type of uh, solutions for seating because you need to be able to clean that without mm -hmm. harming the products when people are coming and going. So 
This is, I mean, as much as we're going to go back to the new, it's going to be a new normal. I don't think it's going to go back to exactly how things were. And it's important to consider how we're going to keep ourselves and our customers safe as we go back and open up and uh, trying to get back that normal that we used to have. So those are the type of conversations I'm having. And it's really trying to think ahead and trying to think proactively and allowing our customers to be prepared for that, but also sharing some of those best practices. And in some cases, people are not thinking you know, a year from now, they're thinking of just a month from now because it's survival mode, you know, and it's, it's my job, it's our job to give them that insight and give them the guidance and help them prepare for the reopening or for the new for the new normal. Yeah. And, and and I guess some great points there. And I guess the, you know, the, what I heard you kind of mentioned at the tail end of that was, you know, us providing solutions and insights and recommendations to customers and, and to kind of bring the conversation back to, you know, the employee purchase program as well as the work from home program. Um, I mean, we're instrumental right now in working with customers and bringing information and solutions and value to the table to make sure that the, whatever it is that we implement, whether it's a, just an employee purchase program, whether it's just a work from home program or a variety of the two, we're finding that um, you know, our, our salespeople across the country are the ones kind of on the front end of um, leading our customers down the right path as it relates to what they feel is going to be the best solution for their business. Absolutely. And I have to say, uh, Dave, it's been it's been really great to watch how we as a company have pivoted over the last year. And it's important to know that the reason there is a reason why we have the work from home program as well as the employee purchasing program. It's simply because we we heard our customers the need for both, right? I mean, you, there are organizations who have a budget available and are capable of providing uh, funding to their staff. And then there's others who are maybe not as uh, financial, financially capable of doing that, but they still want to provide a perk and they still want to take care of their employees. And the best way to do that is by leveraging their corporate pricing and extending that to their staff. So um, it's, it's been amazing to watch how everyone's pivoted and I, I look forward to sharing some of this insight with all of our customers and any new ones going forward. Absolutely. No, much appreciated. And, and the three of us had a lot of dialogue as we were preparing for for this session. And I think one of the things that we chatted about that, that maybe we haven't talked about today is how, you know, back in March of 2020, it, it seemed like the step that we were taking to move everybody home and, and March break was extended for the kids. It seemed at the time that it was temporary and we thought it would be a, you know, a short one week or two week period yeah. and then everyone would be back to normal. And then that gradually became a month, which gradually became, you know, seven yeah. months. And then, you know, here we are a year later and we're still not in an environment where everybody's back in the office. So I think, you know, I think to your point, Amela, there's still a lot of organizations out there that haven't, that have kind of taken the wait and see approach. Uh, before they've implemented uh, a solution. And so even to this day, we're still having a lot of conversation and dialogues with customers around getting solutions implemented that, that will suit and support their people that are working in a home environment. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So I, I guess just to, to wrap it up, we, uh, we hope you found some of the insights that we've shared with you today informative. Um, we understand that the landscape of work as we know it has likely been changed permanently. All of the data that we're seeing seems to point to some sort of a hybrid model. And as Amela mentioned, you know, we don't think we're going back to how it used to be. We think there's a new normal that's being created and, and that new normal is some sort of a hybrid model of working from the home or the office and prob more than likely a combination of both uh, post pandemic. So we've got two fantastic solutions uh, that we've talked with the, uh, you folks today uh, that we can implement. Again, it's the work from home solution, our work from home program, as well as our employee purchase program. We're very eager to continue to talk to you about that, again, whether individually or with your organization, uh, and help you design and implement a solution that works best for you and your organization. So with that, I think we'd like to open it up to any questions that you might have for us today.